Welcome to the first episode of the Accidental Modeler. This is only the second scale model I've ever built. I never put together models as a kid, so this is all new to me. I spent days watching YouTube videos and reading many articles. There are some great modelers out there, and I will be linking to their websites and YouTube channels as I go along with this series. Please know that there is no right way to model, only that this is my way to model. I decided to do a model of one of the first cars I ever drove, a 1990 5.0 V8 Mustang. Yes, the car insurance costs more than the payments. I also wanted to do a model where the pieces fit together really well without a lot of puttying and curse words. I've already done the early stages of prep on this model before I recorded a new video. First up, let's look at some tools. The uh, most important tool is an X-Acto knife and replacement blades. As soon as the knife gets dull, I replace it with a fresh blade. The quickest way to screw up a model seems to be trying to cut or detail with a dull blade. Next up is a self-healing cutting mat. Since I recorded this video, I've jumped up to an 18 by 12 inch. Sprue cutters. Uh, you don't have to spring $18 for the best pair of Zurons. Uh, you can get a pair for eight to ten dollars. Sanding sticks. I actually started out with a nail file from a local beauty supply. It's 120 grit on one side and 240 grit on the other. For decades, every kid put together models with testers red cement in a tube. Nowadays there is an entire shelf of glue choices. I will be using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to bond unpainted model pieces together. So whenever a company like Revell or AMT produces a scale model kit such as a car, truck, jet, plane, or really anything that's made out of plastic, they use a process called injection molding. These companies start by designing and milling a metal mold. A mold is two heavy pieces of steel that fit together with gaps that allow molten plastic to be injected into it. Each sprue or parts tree that you see in a scale model kit comes from a unique mold. When the two halves of the mold come together, there are always little imperfections and small gaps. These gaps allow excess plastic to leak out and produce edges and seams that shouldn't be there. This is called flash. To make sure all of the parts release from the molds and don't get stuck inside, the manufacturer periodically sprays an oily mold release substance inside the molds. This oil can interfere with gluing and painting, so you should really hand wash all the plastic parts in your model kit, including clear parts, before you get started. Yes, you can slap together a model in two hours and call it done. But if you take your time with cleaning up the parts, scraping, sanding, puttying, painting, decaling, detailing, you can easily spend 20 hours on a single car model. But the results will be totally worth it and something worth displaying on your shelf. I went through the instruction sheet and found that some pieces are the same color and can be glued together before any painting. I went ahead and glued the top and bottom half of the engine, the fronts and backs of the seats, and the air filter intake assembly.
Once all of the parts are cleaned up and ready, I tape the pieces to toothpicks and hobby sticks so that I am ready to prime and paint them. I will be priming all of the parts with Tamiya Surface Primer Gray. This is a lacquer-based primer, which means it bites into the plastic and provides an excellent surface. After the primer, I will be using acrylic paints from Tamiya as well as Tester's Model Master Acrylic Line. Now I am outside on a very humid night, unfortunately, and I will be applying primer with very light coats rather than one heavy coat, as that coat would not dry properly and may have runs. For the really small pieces, I will use a pair of reverse tweezers to hang on to a part that doesn't get painted. In our next episode, we will be moving into the airbrush booth and start getting some color on our parts. Thanks for watching!